Nearly a trillion dollars in commercial real estate loans are set to mature this year, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association. That's an increase of almost 30 percent from a year ago, and that might be just one of the concerns looming over the credit market. Fortress Investment Group co-CEO and managing partner of Credit Funds, Drew McKnight, joins us here on set. Welcome to uh, our set here in New York City. Thanks for having me. Um, the last time we saw Drew was in Miami. So what you think we're at the top of the first inning when it comes to the problems we're going to face in commercial real estate? I mean, how does this sort of unfold? Is it like a rolling default? Is it a crisis situation? How do you see that? I, I, I do. I think it's top of the first inning. I think um, if you look at the number of defaults to date, it's very, very low. Um, why is that? Uh, it's, it's a host of reasons. Uh, they've been able to extend the maturities. Um, but if you really think about it, there's capital structures that are upside down. It's not just in office, it's also in multifamily. And so as you think about this opportunity and um, what's going to have to happen, uh, real estate was the biggest beneficiary of low rates, right? That was the, the prime beneficiary. And unless rates can reset and reset quickly, um, I just don't see a, a, an easy solution. Um, you know, how does, that, how does that play out? If you, if you take a step back and think about the crisis, uh, in, in the RTC crisis in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, I think there were 700 uh, financial institutions that failed. In the global financial crisis, I think there were 400 banks that failed. We've had five so far. Um, I'm not saying we're going to have that deep of a, uh, of a recession, but you know, if you think about RTC, it was very centralized to real estate. Our own view is the economy can, might be able to hold up okay even if we have this real estate reset, but for folks that own real estate levered, um, it, could, it could be very painful. Drew, it's interesting, you know, one of your peers, uh, John Gray, who's the president of Blackstone last week, I think he said to Bloomberg that real estate pr prices have bottomed, and if you move fast, you can buy assets at cheap prices. That seems to be very contradictory to what you're kind of saying. You just said you think we're kind of in the first inning of a reset here. I've heard of John Gray. Uh, he's a great real estate investor. Yeah. Um, I think they have a uh, very large and long um, mm -hmm. time horizon. And so I think in the context of trying to put $100 billion to work, maybe you need to get really aggressive right now. Um, I think in the, in the context of trying to pick a bottom, I think it's really, really early. And I think we've got a lot of time. I think it, prices will go lower uh, for real estate, um, I think almost across the board. Um, and if you think about what's gonna, how are interest rates going to go lower, because I think that will be part of what has to happen in order for real estate to, to, to uh, reset, the only way interest rates are going to go lower is if the economy really slows down and if the Fed can actually start to, to, start to cut, which, again, if you look at what's going on, and BOJ just uh, hiked today for the first time, I think, in 17 years, um, I think we're actually, actually far away from them really being able to, to cut meaningfully. Do you think we're going to see some sort of tipping point event, like a couple of big asset sales that force everyone to mark their books lower, which then triggers all kinds of more collateral or whatever it might be, where a liquidity crunch really quickly it's, follows? I mean, you know, I think it, it, it's hard to know. I think if you, if you look back at what happened last year with Silicon Valley Bank and some of the, um, some of the crises we had last year, that was really centralized on a handful of banks that had very specific asset liability mismatch. And we still had a deposit flight um, that was massive and, and put the whole banking sector at risk. I think with real estate, you know, virtually every bank has exposure. And, and to your point, if you think back to the global financial crisis, it didn't, you know, it didn't matter which bank was transacting. If any bank transacted at any price, everyone went through every bank's balance sheet and marked them to market. If loans traded at 70 cents, every bank's uh, balance sheets marked at 70 cents. Now, I don't think that's correct. Um, but if we do enter that, that stage of this of this uh, sort of crisis, I think you could have that. Drew, what, be, what will be the warning signs for the audience? Is it re, small and regional banks rolling over again? Is it something in the, like the HYG, the high yield credit ETF? What should we be looking for to sort of be a warning for what you're talking about? I, I think what will be the trigger will, will start to be the actual transactions. I think you'll see asset sales uh, occur. I think right now, bank, there are banks that do want to delever, that want to sell assets. They need to, they need to raise equity or, or raise reserves in order to do that. In, to, to Steve and I were talking to the healthy banks. I think they're going to be able to take the reserves. They've got the earnings. They're, this is a good environment. They'll be able to take the reserves. And I believe the strong will get stronger. And I think the smaller banks that aren't positioned will either have to get bought or, or get liquidated. In the meantime, you've acquired um, performing loans, office loans specifically, at just cents on the dollar, right? 50, 69 cents on the dollar. So where else are you seeing 
these opportunities right now, especially as you know, since we're in the early innings and you're still expecting rough times ahead, you're still out there buying assets. Well, again, I, I do think we're, one of the things that John Gray said was you, you need to be buying as things are bottoming. And so, you know, if you can buy loans at a, at a healthy enough discount, you're getting and you're getting coupons along the way. You have the ability and some downside protection. Um, we're also very active in forward flows um, with with mortgage origination and consumer finance. Um, and then and I think real estate equity will also be a big opportunity. I just think it's going to be a long, a, a long road ahead.